Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be showcasing some PvP gameplay featuring the Ice Gauntlet and the Rapier. This is a really, really strong build that we've been talking about a lot recently on this channel. If you guys want to learn more about this build at any point in time during today's video, I will have a link down in the description below. It's a Blood Tree build on the Rapier, and then the Ice Gauntlet, we're going to be going Ice Spike and Ice Storm for in crazy, crazy damage. Uh, we're also going to be going in Tome and Riposte as our defensive spells to make sure we stay alive, or defensive abilities rather. But here you're going to be able to see just a couple different clips of really, really good gameplay when we're outnumbered. This exact round here, we're not really outnumbered, it's just a 2v2, but there is 1v3s, 2v3s, and more coming very, very soon in this video today. Before we get to those clips though, I do want to say if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on as we walk you guys through some of the gameplay and really the plan you're going to want to make sure to do in some of these you can see the ice spike they're doing a ton a ton of damage even as a dry ice spike so you're going to get a lot of burst opportunities here it's a very very fun build it's a high skill ceiling as well you're going to have people that are able to do a lot of damage but they're not always going to be able to survive or you know the opposite as well so here is the round that turns into a 1v3 scenario uh, so we actually have some good pl players in this one so far. We have Red Devil Jack and A Weeks uh, versus, I don't even know who's on the other team. I didn't read all the names, but you'll be able to see here, this 1v3 is pretty crazy, and it just gives you, or it kind of goes to show how strong you can be in PvP if you have defensive abilities as well as offensive abilities to burst certain players and then, you know, kind of stay alive with those defensive abilities as well. So here we're going to be using our Oak Flesh Bomb right away. We're actually going to try to burst this guy with a spike, but we realized pretty quickly it's a bad guy to focus on as he is the tank. So we wasted a lot of time on him. Very bad by me. Uh, we actually are down now two to three, which is perfectly fine. We should still have a chance of coming back here. I get a nice ice spike there, a little bit of damage. At this point, I want to go after somebody obviously a little more squishy. This is my next target. Unfortunately, this guy, you know, the tank comes back up against. So we're going to repost him, get a little damage off on him. We're not doing too, too much yet, unfortunately, though as we get pushed by the next spear player. The spear, though, isn't able to do too much damage as we get a nice ice spike to kind of separate us. We try to get a blood stack. We miss it. However, we are able to get a repost and a backstab very, very well, missing that, uh, unfortunately, missing the uh, flurry and finish there, though. Uh, we are able to get a nice little stack of Keen, or not Keen, but of Tondo on the tank, though. As we continue on this fight, it does turn into a 1v3. And at this point, you may think, you know, the slim chances of me winning have continued to dwindle. But realistically, we still have a good shot because we're able to burst a guy right here to make it a 1v2. It's a really nice combo with the Rapier. At this point, we're going to do an Entome. We're going to try to get some of our health pots back, the cooldowns on regen pots, and also the powerful oak flesh bomb is coming back as well so you can see a nice little ice spike there it's actually going to be a huge miss definitely needed to hit that one for some more damage but we are able to burst the tank very very low right there with a very high amount of burst at this point i'm looking to heal potions or sorry use potions and use my bomb again which i just did we're going to go after this tank because of how low he actually is and he's not seeming to heal some reason he probably just used a potion recently but we are going to throw the ice storm up and we're going to do an entome so he's taking damage the entire time if you see in the top side of the screen you can see ring of fire closing in one second so i baited him into the corner at that point we were able to just walk out willy-nilly get some health off and he is dead so now it's a 1v1 however healing's reduced quite a bit at this point and the big problem here is i'm at 1600 hp and he's at full health i'm now at 1400 hp i juke left i know he's throwing something he threw a fireball very big juke because i would have been dead for sure uh, but at this point it's still looking like it could be over uh, we are able to go around the corner here, get a nice keen tondo on him, which when I say keen tondo, it's just going to be doing a crit. A very, very big combo to do a lot of damage and take him out to win that 1v3. A lot of fun with this build. Like I said, I'll have the link down in the description if you guys want to learn more about it. It goes over the abilities, the stats, the attributes, and everything. Here we have a 1v2 situation. I'm just healing up, letting them reset, letting me reset. I figure I can do this based on the builds they're going. I'm not too worried about it. They do have a life staff user, which is typically a very, very annoying build to go against. However, this life staff user I'm able to get onto very, very early, do damage to both the damage dealer and the life staff user. So now he doesn't know who to heal. He kind of mixes it up and he gets taken out pretty early for it. However, you know, still a chance that this tank is able to take me out. I'm at 5,000 HP after a health pot. I'm trying to use some uh, food to really regen quickly. He's chasing me down. The big thing here is I'm going to throw probably another Entomb up and try to get some health and cooldowns back to make this more of a fair 1v1 fight. 
he is able to get a big backstab on me, which is kind of dangerous of me to play the way I'm playing. We get a nice riposte off, though, and at this point, Flourish and Finish is going to do a lot of damage with the stacks we have on him. And at this point as well, we're just going to kind of chase him around. So now it's more of an even fight. I'm a little healthier than him at this point, which is huge. Uh, he gets a nice little combo there, but all it's going to take is one more repost and one more flourish and finish to finish him off and win that 1v2. Next, we have in line a fight that starts out as a 3v3. However, very, very quickly turns into a 3v0. So I wanted to show you guys some of the bursts that we are able to do as a team with some of these team comps. Uh, as we take him out very, very quickly, we get a flourish and finish, take him out very, very quickly. I'm assuming these guys are low gear score. I'm not popping, you know, three, four Ks though on non crits. So maybe they're high gear score and we just had a really, really solid team comp. But I want to also show you this clip. So this one is a 2v3 situation. I'm in the middle with these three players, my play, uh, my teammates, sorry, on the other side of the map. So I am able to burst them all by myself. Typically there, it's going to take more than that. We get a nice fireball from the teammate though. We're going to get a heal up. Uh, I missed my ice spike, which would have ended this guy, so that's pretty unfortunate, but it doesn't matter. We are able to win this 2v3 scenario very, very quickly. Now we just have the tank to worry about, which obviously at this point is just a matter of time. He's not going to be able to 1v2 typically. Uh, a tanks just don't do enough burst damage to take me out. And at this point, I'm just blocking, by the way, with the ice gauntlet. It's kind of funny to see that happen with the ice gauntlet, but uh, it's very effective. If you guys haven't tried blocking with the ice gauntlet, depending on the perks you have as well, it's a very, very effective way to... to kind of mitigate damage so here we're gonna have a 2v3 situation yet again um, we're gonna get a nice ice spike we're gonna go in tomb we're gonna get some health back with the entomb perk we're gonna get a nice burst on the spicy mama and we take him out this is actually one of those scenarios where i am dead uh, and i do not finish the 1v2 or sorry the 2v3 just because i get hit by that hammer i miss the roll chance opportunity i had i don't know if you guys saw it but there was a chance i had 50 stamina left could have rolled out of that dodge uh, or sorry that hammer play and gotten out of there very very easily i also want to show you guys some of the bursts because people are saying this only works against squishy players well this is one of the very very tanky players out there he's playing a full tank build pretty much sword and shield and i'm able to chunk him pretty much instantly in the open world pvp so if you guys haven't played this build at all yet it's very very versatile we also have a play here. I believe this is going to be that 1v3, kind of just re-talking about it because this is one of the bigger plays of the video. I just wanted to say, you know, recently I picked this build up and started playing it in PvP Arena, and it's been a lot of, lot of fun. Some builds are strong against it, some aren't, and this is one of those builds I'm able to exploit because of all the healing I have and them not having a life staff user and they also not having just crazy, crazy bursts that you would assume people would bring in an arena. But you can see the burst I do to the tank again. And like I said, there's a lot of plays that are huge here. I dodge that fireball by sidestepping to the side. And that happens later on in the video as well. So a big thing you guys need to get better at is you always can't know what's behind you. But if you're left in a 1v2 situation, you know there's focus only on you. You know they're going to be throwing abilities. Definitely be running side to side or jumping or dodge rolling when you have full stamina or, you know, really when you have the option to definitely start rolling around and, uh, you know, dodging at the very least. You can see here, I'm able to get close to him again. I messed this up very, very heavily. This should have been a big kill for him. Um, I'm able to dodge a lot there though, and somehow stay alive behind this pillar with a nice little, like I said, dodge there of the fireball. At this point, we're going to heal up again. And like I said, this is one of the best builds for this scenario, just because you have so much defensive really stats and you have so much burst potential. So all it takes is him to mess up once like he did there and take him out. So thank you guys again for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on. I'll see you guys all in the next one.